The House of Squibb, manufacturing chemist of the medical profession since 1858, brings you Academy Award. The pictures, the players, the techniques and skills which have won or been nominated for. The coveted awards granted each year by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to each in his field for outstanding achievement. The House of Squibb, makers of the great family of Squibb medicinal products, brings you Paramount's hit picture, Arise My Love, which won the 1940 Academy Award for the year's best original story. As our star today, we are happy to present Mr. Ray Milan, who, as best actor of the year, won the 1945 Academy Award. Spain, summer of 1939. The Spanish Civil War is over. The actors take their places in the wings, ready to go on stage for the Second World War. Some, however, have finished their careers. They wait in a military prison to pay the price of the defeated. Well, Lieutenant, it's my turn to be shot, huh? Well, I'm ready. Here's my last will and testament. Bring it with you. Your wife has won you a reprieve, Lieutenant Martin. My what? Your wife. Your pardon. Wife? You nuts? Senor, you will come this way, huh? Oh, Tom! Tom, it's you! Darling, don't you understand? You're free. You're pardoned. Your wife is here. <laughs> Haven't you got a kiss for her? Yeah, sure. Oh, Dom, leaving me in a New York apartment with back rent and one child and another one on the way. No. Oh, Dom, I hate you, I hate you. Maybe I shouldn't come for you at all. Uh, Senora, he, he is a young man. When I was his age and engaged, I too ran away for service in Spanish Morocco. Uh, Salvador, bring the prisoner's belongings at once. I'm sure Senora and Senora Martina are in a hurry to leave. Oh, Tom. Tom, you're free. free. Uh huh. So it seems, darling. The papers await your signature. No, uh, very well, Lieutenant. I'll take care of them at once. Come. <laughs> All right, let's have it. Who are you? Be careful if you don't want the two of us shot. They might be listening. Well, what gives, gorgeous? I'm Augusta Nash, Associated News. I thought up this gag to make a story, an exclusive beat. But why pick me? It had to be an American for the home papers. You see? Oh, sure, sure. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. I can get shot any day. Oh, my darling, my darling. Oh, they have been so kind. The Spanish are the most civilized people on earth. They have so, so... Uh, <clears throat> uh, I beg your pardon, but uh, it is time for you to go. Uh, can I call you a car? No, Your Excellency, I hired one. We're catching the plane for Paris at 2.55. Paris. I'd much rather be in Paris this afternoon than in your pine box, Governor. Goodbye, Excellency. And again, I thank you from the bottom of an overflowing heart. Oh, not. It is nothing, oh, nothing. Oh, come, darling. The car is waiting. Yes. Goodbye. They, uh, they say shot down 19 of our planes. Eh? Oh, oh, yes. A very good pilot. He forgot something. A letter addressed to you. His last will and testament, I think. Uh -huh. No harm in reading it. Eh? What a man will write when he is about to die. Uh, finally, I direct that there shall be no melancholy among these, my flying friends, as I die an orphan and a bachelor. A bachelor? Maldita! She is not his wife! We have been tricked! What kind of a church bell makes a sound like that? That's no church. That's the alarm bell at the prison. Tom, we're trapped. They're coming across the field. 
Just a plane. Come on, is this or nothing? Look out, the mechanic spotted you. Case is saved. Take care of you, Stitch. Shut up! Tom, Tom, help me. I can't get Let in. Let me go, baby. Hold on. This is going to be the fastest takeoff in the books. Here we go. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. <laughs> Yeah, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. I know, but why? My good luck. Some pilots say terrible things. I say nice things. You scared? Yeah, but I've got a Lulu of a story. You ought to get better soon. We've got exactly 47 gallons of gas. This crate is two miles to the gallon. That's 94 miles. It's 120 to the French border. Why didn't you steal a plane with a full tank? Look, I got a good notion to get out of this fat little cloud we're in and let those two fighters on our tail get in a few bursts at you. Have we got things on our tail? Yeah, Spaniards with no souls at all. Oh, this will make a much better story if we land in France. I'm sure it will. If we land back in Spain, it'll look reasonably like an obituary, baby. Tom, they're shooting at me. Get back in your cloud. All right, but you better be grateful to me when we do. <laughs> That was close. But what a story I've got now. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? It's got everything. Reporter tricks fascists. Rescues doomed pilot. Chased by fighters. Makes French border with tailwind and prayer and one drop of gasoline left. What about a love interest? What do you mean, love interest? Just what I say. Better move over here, Klaus. I will not. Okay. in the cloud. They'll shoot us down. Promise to put love interest in this epic? No. Yes, yes, anything you say. Now, as I was saying, what this tale needs is a little love interest. Uh, darling? <laughs> Right about that last drop of gasoline. Where are we? Coming down in French territory. Oh, what a ride. Well, you got your story, didn't you? And you're alive, aren't you? Okay, Miss Brisbane, hold on. Lafayette, we are here. To coin a phrase. Yeah, I got lots of them. What happens now? I'm getting to a telegraph office to file my story. Wait. What for? You can't take advantage of me now. Look, now don't be a dope, Gusto. Go roll your hoop, hero. You're only a front-page story in my life. And if I never see you again, it'll be okay with me. Hello? Uh, Monsieur, a lady is on her way up to see you. Miss Augusta Nash of the Associated News, monsieur. No! Oh, but yes. Oh, but of course. Now, Paris is really Paris. Uh, j j just a moment. Well, if it isn't French page, Gusto herself. Come on in, baby. Paris sure was lonesome without you. I'm here on assignment. I had to come. Well, that's too bad. I've got to know everything about you. 50,000 more words, as a matter of fact. You're a big success in the hometown papers. That's what love interest will do. If I told the truth about what a cad you are, you'd be the biggest heel in the United States. But in Paris? Oh, la la! I've got a camera. Ah. A great big cameraman standing just outside that door. One pass out of you and he'll take your picture for a welcome mat. <laughs> Relax, Miss Nash. You're as safe with me as you would be at home in a Ford Roadster on a Saturday night. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's get the thrilling details of your moronic childhood. Born? Yes, though some people seem to resent it. Where? Cleveland, Ohio. But tonight I'm in Paris, and they have a guillotine here for people who work at this hour. It's 8 o'clock. Uh, ten of. All right. But on the Champs-Élysées, the lights are bursting into bloom. In the restaurants, wines are growing cold, and women, women are putting perfume behind their ears. Miss Nash, have you ever been to Maxime's? No, I always carry a box lunch. <sighs> 
Well, it has a red plush, candlelight, mirrors, caviar, champagne, and there's something in the air. L'amour? Yeah, all right, so I'm devoting my first three nights to it. That's an awful lot of amour. I was in jail an awful long time. I have reserved a table for nine o'clock. I won't go. Who's inviting you? <laughs> I'm meeting a lady there. With perfume behind her ears? Well, as a matter of fact, she's a Romanian. Oh. <laughs> you know anything about Romanians? No, no, I collect Persians. Uh, well, Romanians have no sense of time. This one always keeps me waiting. Now, while I'm waiting, I can be interviewed. You can be stuffed for all I care. Of course. You can go back to Associated News and tell them that you couldn't get the additional 50,000 words because... I see what you mean. Then shall we say Maxine's at nine? Why, certainly, Mr. Martin, certainly. You will know me because I'll be wearing a shawl over my head. When you hear the slap of my bare feet on the floor... Just tell the waiter I'm the girl with your laundry. Good. And when my Romanian heavy date shows up, I'll expect you to run along. Good evening, Miss Nash. See you at nine. No! You will hear the second part of Academy Award in just 52 seconds. Incidentally, you probably don't take much longer than that to brush your teeth. And yet, even in so short a time, Squib Dental Cream can help you to do a more effective job. Use it regularly, and you can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Yes, Squib Dental Cream quickly wakes up your whole mouth with flavor cool and tangy as crushed fresh mint itself. And Squib Dental Cream livens up your smile, too, uncovers natural sparkle that adds to your sense of well-being. For Squib Dental Cream contains one of the safest, softest, yet most effective polishing agents known to dental science. So tonight, try Squib Dental Cream, the dentifrice that loves up to the standard of perfection which distinguishes every member of the great family of Squib products. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. In a moment, you will hear part two of Arise, My Love. But first, for making this story available... We want to thank Paramount Pictures, whose current release is To Each His Own, starring Olivia de Havilland. And now the House of Squib presents part two of Academy Awards, starring Ray Milland in Arise, My Love. Now, you said you never met Lindbergh. Where were you when he made his flight? I was in the Boy Scouts, Troop C, Wolf Patrol. I just rubbed up two scout masters no, the no, wrong no, no, way that and won't I... Do. Uh... No, 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 no. You were in New York, one of cheering millions. That was when you vowed to fly or die. How did I do? You turned out to be a louse. Thanks. Have a drink? Yes, I will. Cordon Rouge, 33, with a dash of creme de mint. Why, certainly. Louis, you heard the lady. We. Oui. Flower girl? Oh, it was you. Gusto, I have a problem. You see, the last time I saw this Romanian lady fair, we had a bit of a row. She seemed to get the impression that I was <laughs> something of a heel. No. Yes. Don't tell me it's all over town. Yep. So, Gusto, I must erase the footprint left by a heel. Why, you're beginning to sound human. Well, you, you see, I'm quite crazy about this girl. She's, she's swell, really. Only she has standards. Now, these flowers might help. What should I choose? Oh, you wouldn't want anything routine. How about these? Jasmine. Those little things? Smell them. Wonderful. Chasseur, put these on my table, please. Oui, monsieur. Now, let's get on with our interview. Uh, you were in commercial aviation. Were you ever a test pilot? Nope, that was Gable. You'd better sip your wine. Oh, yeah, the wine with the creme de menthe, of course. Oh, listen to that. My favorite song. Yeah, it's pretty. My big sister's beau used to sing it. Oh, he had a terrible voice, but a lot of feeling. Gusto. Yes, Tom? Couldn't we dance? Well, what about your Romanian girlfriend? Well, I told you she was always late. Well, all right. 
But hold me so I can keep an eye on the front door. Okay, Gusto. You watch the door and I'll watch you. Tom. Yeah? Paris is wonderful. Even in a rented fiac. You're terrific. You'd be terrific even in Pittsburgh. Tom. Yeah? Whatever happened to that fat Romanian? Uh, she wasn't so fat. How can you tell? She never showed up. Maybe she doesn't even exist. Maybe. Maybe I walked into a trap. Gusto, do you like being trapped? I huh? loved it tonight. What do you mean tonight? I'm playing for keeps. No, Tom, I'm sorry. I've had a grand time, really, and I've had a grand time from the moment I first saw you walk into that prison office. But I'm getting out of this trap, Tom, right here on this corner. Driver, stop here. Now, look, Tom, let me get this off my chest. I'm falling in love, Tom. I know all the signs about me. Chills, fever, weak stomach, the works. And I can't afford it. You see, Tom, I... I've just gotten a break in the newspaper business, and I want to go places for a while. I want to watch history being made and write about it. I got ink in my blood, Tom. Oh, nonsense. No dame with what you've got showing has any business to have ink in her blood. And as far as careers are concerned, I'll give you one that'll keep you dizzy. Watching over a goon called Martin. I know, Tom. When I'm near you, I keep looking at the world through a wedding ring. And that isn't good for a headline hunter. Now, look, tonight I go up to my room... And I beat my brains and write the last chapter on the life of Tom Martin, aeronaut. Oh, nuts. Then when I write the end of that story, I pack my bags and rush out and catch a train. Train? What are you talking about? Train to Berlin, Tom. Berlin, where the madmen are drawing a bloodbath for the world. Associated News is sending me there as a correspondent. It's a big break. <laughs> break, huh? You talk of getting a break when those swine are getting ready to ruin the world? You talk of seeing the world through a wedding ring. Don't hand me that. You see the world through an ice cube, baby. Oh, Tom. Go ahead. Go ahead and try and write that story. Tell those millions at home how you won the heart of the dashing flyer. Tell them he offered you love, devotion, the real McCoy, complete with wedding ring and a little flat and sunny side, and how you bravely turned him down because you had to write about Hitler and his hoodlums because, after all, marriage is for simple folk. But a newspaper woman has a public. Good night, Miss Nash, and happy headline. Tom. Oh, Tom, it isn't so. It isn't so. It isn't so. Don't! Conductor, would you please help me open this window? It's stifling in Three here. Minutes. Sure, let me help. Oh. It's close in here, isn't it? Huh? These European trains always smell of eau de cologne and hard-boiled eggs. Tom, what are you doing here? Why are you running after me? I'm not running after you. Just have beyond the same train, same compartment. It's just a coincidence, it's all. Just a coincidence. That's right. The eighth you will play. Here. Berlin? Yeah, yeah. Warsaw. Thank you. You're going to Warsaw? Volunteer Tomislas Martinowski reporting for duty with the Polish Air Force. When did you enlist? Before breakfast. My credentials? The Polish consulate is working night and day, signing up flyers. Looks like any moment now. Tom, did last night have anything to do with your joining up? Last night? Mm -hmm. No. Nights seldom have anything to do with my decisions. You see, I have principles. When Adolf takes a poke at those poles, he takes a poke at people like me. It's simple. Yeah. Simple. What are you looking at, Gusto? Scenery, the wood, trees. Yeah. The forest of Compiègne. Uh huh. Look at it. A kind grandmother dozing in her rocking chair. Old trees doing curtsies in the wind because they still think Louis the Fourteenth will be passing by. Who said that? Doesn't sound like you. No. A French boy was with me in Spain. He used to talk about this scenery back in Spain. He must have been a nice boy. He was. He had principles, too. Back when very few people could afford them. You know, it'd be kind of a nice gesture if we could stop this train and take his memory through that forest. Sit beside a book. 
stroll where the wild strawberries grow. Nobody can stop this tray. Only to pull in that emergency cord. You don't savvy much French. Sign says that anyone who pulls that cord as a joke goes to Devil's Island. French is so excitable. Listen, career woman, you're as safe as in a church. You're worried about your career. Well, nothing can stop you now. It's Berlin at 70 miles an hour. No danger at all. No danger, whatever. So, there being no danger, you might as well admit you feel toward me the same way I feel toward you. All right. I admit it. There is no danger now. None at all. Even when I take you in my arms. No danger whatsoever. Oh, honey. Look, I never did like kissing girls on trains. Let's get off this thing and spend a few hours in the forest of Compiègne. But you can't stop this train now. Oh, yes, I can. Watch me. All I have to do is pull this emergency cord. I know this is the forest of Compiègne. I think it's really paradise. Well, seems the way to get to paradise is pull the emergency cord on a train. Oh, Tom, why should we have paradise when the rest of the world is ready to burst into an inferno? Let's enjoy paradise while we can. Don't you think we'd better get back to the inn? Just one more minute, darling. Just one. It's so cool. You know, there's dew in your hair. And there's an ant strolling up your cheek. I wish it were your lips. Uh-huh. Such a little kiss. Such a little ant. <sighs> oh, Tom, this is too good to last. No tears, please. Even if it is our last day. No tears. But it's early, and it'll be a long day. Maybe the sun will stop. Listen. Bombers. It's begun. Let's get back to the inn. There's a radio there. With six German armies pushing rapidly toward the heart of Poland, and with Nazi bombs falling on every important Polish town, the French and English governments await an answer to their ultimatum. General mobilization has been ordered in both countries. Tom! There's a train for Paris at 8.5. Uh, you are Americans, I believe. Before you came in, there was a broadcast from your embassy on Paris asking that all Americans return to America as soon as possible. Thank you. Oh, Tom, what do we do now? Well, you'd feel pretty foolish to take a part now that the race is on. Yes, we stay. We're not turning back now. We're not running home just because we got sentimental for a day or two. No, we make great gestures, don't we? We're gallant, we're reckless. We're the new lost generation, you flying till it happens, till they smash it a bit. And I writing and writing. Oh, Tom, I wouldn't care if I never wrote another word. Gusto. Oh, Tom. Tom. You laugh at the little newsreels in Cleveland. To me, Cleveland sounds like heaven. Heaven. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ile de France is sold out. Aquitania is sold out. Washington sold out. But you said we... Oh, oh yes, madam. Oh, here you are. Two on the Athenia. Oh, good. Tom, we're on the Athenia. Uh, boat leaves Liverpool at four o'clock. Plane in one hour. Thank you very much. We're on our way, Tom. Here you are, sir. Champagne and mint. And four glasses is ordered, sir. Thank you, Stuart. You expecting a storm tonight? Oh, no, sir. Just a precautionary measure, so the lights can't be seen. The Admiralty has ordered a complete blackout. No calls for alarm. We're at war, sir. So we've heard. Well, here's to Augusta Nash. Career woman, foreign correspondent, queen of headlines. Goodbye, career woman. Into the ocean with the glasses. Into the mighty deep. Toast number two to Tom Martin. Crusader, Avenger of the Oppressed. 
Goodbye, Tom Martin, Crusader. Into the deep, deep, deep. None of the Athenians' life preservers so left. Not even a thought. Not even a thought. Dead men tell no tales. Tom, you wouldn't have it any other way. No. No, darling. We're playing for keeps. Oh, Tom, I... Tom! Tom! You've been torpedoed. Clear those boats. Make for the coast of Ireland. Down the beach, they sail more towards the village. Oh, more boats. Gusto. Oh, Gusto, no. darling, my darling. Oh, you looked so little in that lifeboat when it pulled away. What happened to you? Well, they fished me out of the water. One of three seaplanes. I've been flying with them. Flying? Yeah. A New Zealand kid, RAF. Two dozen times he set that five-ton plane down in the sea and picked somebody up. The last time he was so done in, he just fell forward on the stick. So you took oh, over? I had to, Gusto. Mr. Martin? Yeah. I beg your pardon, sir. The commander says it's all right, sir. Thank you. I'll be with you in a minute. Yes, sir. They wanted me to help find that sub. They need me, Gusto. Oh, please, please don't look at me like that. Don't make me feel as if I'm walking out on you. <sighs> Only yesterday we thought we could throw two people overboard. God knew better. He threw us right back after them. Yes. Oh, Gusto, I've never loved you so much. You're joining them, the RAF? Yes. But look, Gusto. This is the end. The end? You don't think this is the end? That some crowd down in that sub is going to click his heels and say that freedom is a sign of weakness and incompetence and that he and his master race only have to push a button and we all go down like stones to the bottom? No. This isn't the end. This is the beginning, darling. A beginning of something you and I have to end before we can go back to Cleveland. Before any free person can go back anywhere and stay free. I know, Tom. I know. There must be a phone in the village and I have a story to tell the world. That will be a beginning. We're ready, sir. Thank you. Yes, darling, you say it to America. Say, arise, my love, be strong so you can stand up straight and say to anyone under God's heaven, all right, whose way of life will it be, yours or ours? Goodbye, darling. Not goodbye. Just, I'll be seeing you. Yes, darling. I'll be seeing you. This way, sir. Okay, RAF, after you. Today, thanks to medical science, thousands with heart conditions may now live reasonably normal, happy lives. That is why at the House of Squibb, no work is more satisfying than the production of digitoxin used in the treatment of certain heart conditions. To give you some idea of the complex processes necessary in the making of this vitally needed drug, you should know that Squibb technicians must process three tons of dried digitalis leaves to obtain one pound of pure digitoxin crystals. Through the development of quantity production techniques, Squibb has helped to make this important drug available to physicians in uniform strength and purity for everyone who needs it. With digitoxin, as with all other members of the great family of Squibb products, the house of Squibb is following an endless quest for perfection that is the Squibb ideal. One more reason why, in home or hospital, Squibb is a name you can trust. Ray Milland appeared today through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and is currently being seen in Paramount's new production, The Well-Groomed Bride. Arise, My Love was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. You are invited to listen to Academy Award again next week at the same time when the House of Squibb will bring you another great Academy Award performance. The delightful comedy drama Ruggles of Red Gap with two outstanding stars, Charles Lawton and Charlie Ruggles. Until then, this is Hugh Brandage bidding you good night for the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>